Hi everyone, today we're going to look at GCSE design technology in the core area of fibres. In this tutorial you'll be able to do a range of things. You will look at the origins of fibres, the properties of fibres, fabric mixes, microfibres and fabric construction. You can either listen to the tutorial or you can start to create your own revision flashcards which I will show you how to do throughout the tutorial clip. If you wish to make your own revision flashcards the first task is set in front of you. You need to understand the difference between natural, regenerated and man-made fibres. Set out your flashcard into the columns shown. Using the which category yellow box to the side of the screen Put in which category you think those fibres belong to. Create your own fat flashcard this way. For those of you that do not want to do this and want to listen to the tutorial, I will continue. If you are doing the flashcard, please pause now. Fibres are separated into two main categories, natural fibres and man-made fibres. There is also a mini category in the middle called regenerated fibres, which take a little bit of each one. We'll start in the natural fibre category. Natural fibres come from animals and plants. In the animal category, you can get wool from sheep, mohair from goats, cashmere from goats, and silk from a silkworm. In the plants category, we've got cotton from the cotton plant, linen from the flax plant, and jute. In the regenerated fabric section, this is fabrics that are made from chemically changed wood pulp and these contain fabrics such as viscose, tensile and rayon. So they have some natural material and some synthetic chemicals in as well. In the synthetic or man-made category, we've got polyester, nylon, aramid, polypropylene and elastane. These fabrics all contain oil and coal. If you have decided to make flashcards, this might be how you set it out. Showing different categories. Try and make them attractive as possible so it's easy for you to revise. The main key points are where the fabrics come from and what type of fabric they are. You may also want to include some fabric properties. I am now going to move on to fabric properties. You can either listen to the tutorial or complete as a task. You could put this onto a revision card or you could do it as a table. Put in the sources of the fabrics, possible properties and possible products that could be made from those fabrics. Natural fibres and their properties. Cotton is a popular fabric, mainly because it is breathable, durable, absorbent and soft to handle. This makes it suitable for things like bath towels and lightweight t-shirts. Linen is a fabric that is also absorbent, has a good drape, that means it hangs well on the body shape. It's durable, however it does crease easily. It's very lightweight and keeps you cool, so this is perfect for summer clothing, tea towels and tablecloths. Viscose is a regenerated fabric. This means it comes from part wood pulp. The properties are it's absorbent, soft to handle, but it's not very durable and can crease easily. They have been using it a lot recently for shirts, dresses and t-shirts. Jute. Jute is a strong and durable fabric. However, it doesn't have many products that it can be made into. If you look at the pictures, this is mainly used for craft products, bags and furnishings. Mohair. Mohair is similar to wool. It's smooth, durable and has high elasticity. That's generally because it's constructed using knitting. It also is very, very warm. This makes it superb for things like jumpers, blankets and socks. Wool. Wool is also warm, absorbent but the negatives are that it can shrink and it's not as durable. It makes similar products to mohair, jumpers, blankets. 
Silk. Silk is very soft to handle. It's absorbent. It has a good lustre. That means a shine on the top of the fabric. And it has a good drape as well. There are negatives to silk in that it is such a delicate fabric. But this makes it really good for products like evening wear and ties. Cashmere. Cashmere is similar to wool and mohair. The properties are that it's soft, warm, but products are very similar to wool and mohair as well. Jumpers, blankets and socks. Here are the answers if you want to create a revision flashcard. We're now going to continue on to looking at manufactured fibres and their properties and sources. You can create a revision card for this. You can do it in a table or you can do it more interactive by putting pictures in to help with revision. Polyester. Polyester comes from oil and coal. It's a non-absorbent fabric, crease resistant with high durability. This makes it suitable for things like raincoats, fleece jackets, working clothes and even medical textiles. Acrylic. This also comes from oil and coal. The properties are that it's warm, non-adsorbent, has a good drape, crease resistance and high durability. It's quite thick, very similar to wool, so it makes it suitable for things like jumpers, fleece and jackets. Nylon. Nylon from oil and coal. It's non-absorbent, durable and breathable. It's very lightweight, so it's suitable for things like socks, seat belts, active sportswear. Aramid fibres. These are fibres like Kevlar and Nomex. The properties are that they are heat resistant and strong, making them suitable for aerospace, body armour and bike tyres. Elastane, also known as Lycra. Elastane is durable, crease resistant and extremely stretchy. This makes it suitable for sportswear, leggings and leotards. Regenerated fibres. Regenerated fibres come from wood pulp where chemicals have been added. An example of this is tensile. It's soft to handle with a good drape, crease resistant and breathable. This makes it suitable for sportswear. There's also viscose and rayon that come from wood pulp. These are soft to handle with good drape, crease resistance, breathability and durability, but are tend to use more on fashion garments such as dresses and shirts. The next section will be focusing on fabric blends, fabric construction and looking at microfibers. If you want to turn this into a revision task you can create a flashcard as shown. Follow on the slides and create your own version. Remember to make them attractive so that you'll use them in the future. Staple and filament fibres. Fibres are also defined by their length. Certain fibres are staple. This means that they are very short. Some of the fibres are filament. Filament are long fibres. Staple fibres tend to be all natural fibres. For example, if you took a ball of wool and pulled it apart, the fibres would be very small. So most staple fibres tend to be natural. There is one exception to the rule, and that is silk. Silk, on the silkworm cocoon, if you were to pull, would be a long filament fibre. Filament fibres are long fibres. Because we can manufacture fabrics, all manufactured or synthetic fibres are filament, like nylon and polyester. Microfibres. Microfibres are very, very tiny. They are finer than human hair. They can be blended with synthetic or natural fibres and are often used for outdoor clothing. The reason why they are blended is because they give them added properties. For example, adding microfibres to polyester, nylon, tensile will give them additional properties. If you have a look at the picture of a comparison of a cotton fibre to a microfibre, you can see that a microfibre will be able to absorb more and get into areas where a cotton fibre wouldn't. This makes them really good for cleaning cloths because they are able to pick up dust and absorb more. 
Fabric blends and mixes. Blending different fibres together produces yarns that have combined properties. Blending fibres together will improve the appearance, performance, comfort and even aftercare of the fabric. You can blend a fabric to reduce the cost. For example, look at the pictures. The properties of cotton are soft, comfortable, it does crease easily but it absorbs quickly. Opposing to this we've got polyester. Polyester is strong, abrasion resistant and quick drying. If we combine the properties of both we get polycotton. Blending fabrics doesn't always mean that we have a new name but you can blend most fabrics. For example, blending cotton and lycra together is how we get jeans to fit more comfortable and stretchy. Acrylic and wool blends in trousers makes it less expensive than making a full wool blend. Fabric construction. There are three methods of fabric construction. Woven fabrics are made in a pattern where the lines of the yarn go over one and under one. Knitted fabrics are created by interlocking loops. Lastly, bonded fabrics are created by heat, moisture and friction in layers. These are fused together. They can also be fused together with a glue. If you wish to create a final flashcard, you can create one with questions for yourself. This will help you to then use this in the future to question your knowledge. I have given some examples below. You should now have a couple of flashcards and a question card that you can use for future revision. You can also refer back to the tutorial.